So I start to scream at the dog to get down. So the dog eventually just kind of cowers. I'm glad I didn't have to stick my pin into its eye or rip out one of its eyes or something to get it to calm down. Meanwhile, Laura just walks up to where those ladies are and she begins to go through her little her little speech with them as I'm kind of like fighting with this dog and the golden retrievers are also running around and these two ape-like women they don't run over to get their dog they don't say anything they just kind of sit there like mildly retarded ape-like people should And Laura basically is kind of just acts like disassociated to this whole thing. So she walks back down the driveway. And she starts to kind of reprimand me for yelling at the dog or something. And I say, and I held up my hand to show her the blood's just pouring down my arm now. And she says... Do you want something for that? I said, yeah, I think so. I said, what should we do? I asked her, her being the supervisor. And she goes, let's go back up to where the dogs are and ask them. I said, I'm not going to go back up there and get attacked by the dog again. And she goes, well, it is their responsibility to help you. So I'm not going to go up there again. She goes, I'll go. They don't have a problem with me. Once again, with that weird attitude, like I'm at fault because the dog attacked me. So she marches back up the driveway and she uh, asked them for uh, some hydrogen peroxide or something, a band aid or something. And a man walks by, walking his dog with a big smile on his face. Like, this is just the best thing that's ever happened to him. And he makes the comment, we got one that's all right and one that's suspect. So I look at him, I say, shut up. And he kind of just, the smile drops from his face and he walks his little dog and continues on his little fucking operation. So she comes down with hydrogens and peroxide and band-aids. And I said, no, you don't want to put band-aids and cover up a freaking animal bite. But I will take some of this peroxide. So I dump some of the peroxide on it. And I'm like, they don't have a rag or anything, huh? Because that's what I asked her for. Paper towel. So with her as a supervisor, she said she had been there for a year and a half. She was oh so smart. We're going to continue doing our route. The whole day it was raining on and off, and her being such a good supervisor, never mentioned to her new employee, hey, if it rains, we're still going to go out. So bring a raincoat, or bring rain gear, because we still walk around, and we try to get donations in the rain. Now, from my experience, walking around with a clipboard with a bunch of paper and receipts, trying to get signatures doesn't go too well in the rain but I don't have a problem that they want to go around in the rain I have a problem with the management over there not telling their people who are coming in for quote unquote training it's gonna to rain today and even if it pours even if it storms even though it's a lightning storm it was thundering and lightning we're still gonna go out with our paperwork and collect signatures that's how devoted they are and if a dog runs out and chews up your arm you're still going to go around and collect donations even if you might have rabies and your arms bleeding and you might need stitches you're still going to walk around in a thunderstorm and lightning storm and collect signatures.
Now, as you know, I don't like going to hospitals because it's just more games there. So I'm observing her and I'm observing all these people that I'm just hap just happened to come in contact with today. These weird ladies with the dog who don't react at all to when their dog is attacking somebody. They're just going to sit there kind of smiling, looking like eight people, not knowing how to react to that. Weird guys walking by, making weird comments. My quote-unquote supervisor acting like a disassociated idiot herself. So I'm just kind of observing all this. And I'm thinking what my move is going to be. She never offers to go back to the van and bring me to go bring me to a hospital. I think she says once we get back to headquarters, uh, we'll have to write an accident re report. So we get to the next door, and I say the little speech there, and I'm not sure if I get a donation or not. But she goes, okay, we're going to have to talk about this one. Let's sit down over here on this curb. She goes, that was pretty good. However, she didn't like my pause between uh, my name and the uh, Citizens Campaign for the Environment. I paused a little too long or something. I paused a little too long during my speech. And then she said, this is the queen of, let's repeat the same phrase over and over and over again to each house we go to and never mix it up. She says, you sound a little robotic. While they insist, I repeat verbatim, exactly word for word, their little speech there. I sound a little robotic while doing it. So on one side, don't deviate from the speech pattern. And two, don't sound robotic while you repeat the same exact thing over and over and over again as you go to the different houses. So meanwhile, blood's gushing down my arm. And she's giving me a hard time uh, because I paused a little too long between, Hi, my name is John, and I work for such and such a place. I paused a little too long. And I was sounding a little robotic, she said. So I started to realize that this girl was a piece of shit. Anybody who's a supervisor or is responsible for other people in a work situation, I think you use your own judgment of how you would handle that situation differently. Now, I'm not a wimp. And I don't expect people to get all over emotional about a dog biting me. But at the same time, she was going out of her way to be cruel while I had blood draining on my arm, and I saw that. So at that point, she goes, okay, you go out on your own again. So I went to the next house I came to. It wasn't on my route there. And I just explained to the lady who came to the door, it seemed like a nice lady, that I had a, a suffer from a dog bite. And I wanted to uh, wash it off or something like that. And I needed a towel. Because what these people wanted me to do was rinse it out with this hydrogen peroxide that smelled funny. And then seal it up with a Band-Aid. And you don't want to, if you have some sort of dog bite or something like that, you want to make sure uh, it stays open and that stuff can get out. If there's stuff inside there, you want to make sure it gets out. You just want to get a dog bite and then wrap it all up. So I said, do you have some alcohol or do you have something like that? But I need a rag to see because it was dried blood all over my arm. I couldn't even see what it looked like. There was uh, turned out to be a huge puncture, a puncture wound on my wrist, just missing the vein. And on the other side, there was three fangs, fang-like uh, rips on the other side of my arm. But the worst was the puncture wound that was deep, and that's where all the blood was coming from. 
So she came out with something that had um, antibiotic ointment. And she says this will kill any infection, so you want to put that on. So she gave me some rags, gave me that cream, and you know, I went around and they said my goal of the day was to raise 40 and I got $44. And we quit around 9 o'clock. Like I said, it was a lightning storm. It would uh, rain on and off, not too hard, but it was thundering and lightning at the end of the day. So it was almost pitch dark around uh, 8.30 or 9 when I started walking back to the minivan. And who comes walking over is this other kid that said he had just got back from Texas for more training. He was this little skinny, dorky kid with glasses and a smashed in face. And he came walking up with a flashlight or his cell phone had a flashlight. And he's like, how was your day? And I said, uh, well, look, take a look at my arm. And he said, oh, how'd you do that? And I said, a dog attacked me. And his next uh, phrase was a very unusual one. He says, that's very rare. You must be like a unicorn. So I looked at him and I told him to shut up. But I started to realize these kids aren't normal. If ever somebody I work with or a friend walked over and said, look, look at my arm, a dog just chewed my arm up. I wouldn't say that's rare, you must be a unicorn. I would expect to get my ass stomped into the street. First, he'd only been there for a month and a half. What do you mean that's very rare? You've been here for a month and a half, you said. What do you, what do you know it's rare or not? And then to say somebody a unicorn, that kid needed a freaking smack. So I just walked away from him at that point. Because we had to wait for uh, Laura to get back with the keys. So I'm kind of standing at the front of the van, and he's kind of standing in the back. And when Laura shows up, she opens the van, and it stinks in the van. It reeks in there, because she had left some food there. And this kid says, in the most idiotic and childlike voice, I smell poop. This kid's a fucking gray. This kid's a fucking idiot. And I realized something's really wrong with these kids. So we go around and we pick up a, these other kids. This beady eyed Indian looking kid that looked like he stuck his finger in an electrical socket. That's what his eyes looked like. He stuck his finger in an electrical socket. There was this Japanese kid and his eyes were pitch black. <laughs> 